Hey everybody, welcome to The Secret History of Living in Your Aquarium. I am in beautiful central Mexico and we are going to see what we can get into today. Welcome to the channel and strap in, grab a snack, let's have an adventure. So here we are up at this alien looking landscape, be it the underwater alien landscape with the beautiful sea anemones and sea urchins, macro algae, coral, soft coral, hard coral, clams, oysters, beautiful little uh, maybe damselfish or something. Look at them go. They look like little bumblebees and uh, all sorts of little critters are living in here and you'll get a sense for oh look at this one here what is this very interesting it totally doesn't realize I'm here it's got a kind of bluish green tail very cool. And uh, right here we've got sea anemones. Very colorful and nice looking. But this guy, whatever these are, they seem to hunt. They seem to come out and nab things and then rush back into where they were hiding. Just like it's doing right now. And those little damsels or whatever fish they are, they seem to be afraid. Now there's a little crab under there by the sea urchin. Pretty cool. So we have a beautiful bird here. And it's holding on very easily to the palm at any angle, even if it's drooping or whatnot. And hey everybody, what is going on? I hope you guys are doing well. I am. I just got to... Uh, Mexico and we are near Puerto Vallarta about an hour and a half north and we are on a beach uh, where a little river empties out that doesn't seem to have a name uh, that I can find nor will anybody local call it anything other than Rio uh, but there are some interesting fish native to this region, including uh, tequila goodyids, split fin goodyids, uh, golden skiffia, all these fish that have gone extinct. And now this area is kind of turned into more of like an eco slash like hippie tourist area. And so it'll be interesting to see the state of nature here, even though they've really built it up a whole bunch. All right, so here is the road up to Salyolita, and it's just locals doing whatever they can on, in local stalls, produce, and things. But all scattered throughout here, there are little illegal settlements of the locals, and they're mining, they're ranching, they're growing plants and things, all in these steep canyons on the way up to Salyolita. Uh, it was really beautiful scenery. All right, so here is the end of the Salulita River, sadly. It actually flows under the sand, uh, just naturally, but it ends here, and it's a do-not-go-into area because of all the waste. But there are still a lot of fish in it. It's just they're pretty gnarly, uh, hardy carp and things like that, mullet. I haven't seen any goodyad looking things or anything like this. This is the Salyolita River. And uh, we're gonna go up river and see what else is there. But just in the water here, it's pretty gnarly and it just smells really badly of sewer. Uh, so definitely don't wanna get anywhere near touching that. I probably don't even wanna go into the water over there in the beach. Um, but I am gonna walk up it and we're gonna see what if any fish we can find. I'm going to use a pool net for my uh, my catching implement. 
Next, we headed higher up into the mountains and up the hillside to get a better view of the town and kind of see the backside of it. You can see where mining and uh, settlements are as well. All very localized. And a view looking down on Salulita and how much it's been built up in the last few years. All right, guys, so I'm on the Salulita River and you know, in my head, I was kind of wondering, like, what does a river look like where all the little fish have gone extinct? We've got the golden skiffia, the rainbow goodyid, uh, it's all, uh, all sorts of different, like split fin, uh, tequila goodyid, the Ameca splendens lives in this river too, and this is their wastewater plant, and there's a three-legged dog over there, and there's just pigeons in the sewage runoff here and uh, you can see just all the junk that's in here some of it you know hurricane uh, washes in and stuff storms but a lot of it is just then people just add to it so let's continue down the river and see what it looks like now there are some little like mullet and maybe like chub or something like that in here but maybe carp even I don't know what they are that are surviving well in here but the herons and other birds are actually surviving hunting them so there is something still here so we're coming into the town from the beach of uh, Salulita got a lot of cool art here all over little cafes it's about 7 a.m. 8 a.m. all right so here we have the town and the road that we're going to take back to where we're staying kind of but you can see the this is the floodway for the rainy season where the river must fill out yeah they've got the big bridge there so then it's just catching up right here it's just the tail end of the dry season but there are some fish here in that the little herons and different egrets and things are feeding but it's pretty gnarly uh, a lot of trash and then not to mention like I said all the human waste goes right into the water basically but there's lots of Indian almond leaf trees and palms and all sorts of stuff it's pretty cool as far as the botany goes. So part of the problem here is that they burn a lot of trash. Uh, that's what's going on over there. And they uh, power wash, if they have the resources, they power wash their stalls and their business fronts. And that all drains into that little river and into the creeks and things. You can see the oil right there. And I would assume that fish don't like it. Beautiful sunset. And then there's a bar. And then there's my wife. And then there's a lady aligning crystal chakras. Interesting. And a fisherman. I gotta get back to the house. That's, that's all I know. The sun's going down. My patience is also. Alright guys, so here I am in Mexico, central Mexico, in a little town, and I found Dr. Pepper. So it was hard to find in that I couldn't find it uh, for probably 10, 15 stores, but finally found it and uh, happy as can be now that I've got my DP. And it was, it was expensive, it was 50 pesos, so... Uh, almost five bucks for a can, but uh, 
not not terrible, I guess, since it's imported. Uh, the stuff they have all says made in like San Diego, and we're 1,500 miles south of San Diego or something like that, 1,000 miles south of San Diego. Okay, now I'm headed back to where we're staying tonight, and uh, in the morning, hopefully, we're going to go check out some nature reserves and uh, some creeks and ponds that may have some native fish, some uh, skiffia or lamia, uh, and definitely they'll have, you know, iguana, things like that. So, all right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Hello, goodbye from Mexico. All right, so I know I look crazy. I look like a, uh, I'm trying to manifest the crazy pretty birds, uh, but we rented a off-road, yeah, off-road, uh, what's the word, go-kart? No, not go-kart, a golf cart. Uh, so we have this ATV golf cart that holds six people that um, my wife and I are going to go try to track down some iguanas and birds in. So let's go. All right, so here are the three-eyed iguanas of Saliolita. They're called that because they have a cluster of cells on their forehead that allows them to see night or day and warm and hot, but it can't make out any shapes. But they are really big. Iguanas up to six feet, two meters. Fully grown. And uh, even the jaguar is not considered one of their natural predators here. There's a younger iguana up there. And they sport different colors just totally depending on what they're on and their diet. And there we go. And look at that dewlap, that throat pouch. It's really impressive. All right, so right here you can see it looks just like a palm tree, but when you look a little closer, the iguanas are actually up in it, the big males, and you can see they've got the, the different uh, little horns on them and the, the spikes on their back. They are sunbathing right now, and they eat out of the mango trees right up the street but check out the stripes that is a natural active camouflage and just like the stripes in between the light and dark on the trees they have that too even though there are very 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 few predators of iguanas uh jaguars could eat an iguana um and humans unfortunately cars uh, but other than that, it's very rare. There's a few snakes and things that may actually be capable of it. And uh, so they're pretty relaxed here, naturally. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so there's another one right here. Thank you so much. And uh, you can see it has the stripes, the dark and the light so that it mimics the palm trees so that you don't see it from below from above it can see it and the golden eagle and the uh some of the there's two or three birds that are big enough to eat young iguanas but the adult iguanas have almost no predators uh, uh you know a a uh jaguar would not make it up into these trees anyways it would it would knock them over so pretty cool to see them just doing their thing they're such big big lizards compared to the smaller lizards that are around here but he's just sunbathing getting the last rays of the sun look at that crocodile of a creature a dinosaur some of the cool artwork here you've got an indigenous girl with uh, two jaguars behind her the constellations and uh, a humpback whale you've got some indigenous fused with uh, modern art and then you've got the ever-present Aztec motif all over everything so here we are at the marina and 
you can see the fisher boat, fishermen boats are all in for the day for the most part. They go out at first sunlight and uh, out there there's some rocks. Probably not a bad idea to look for fish out there at the point. But we're going to head to uh, the Beach of the Dead or the Dead Beach which is, uh, what's the official name? Playa de Muertos. Playa de Muertos. So, Playa de Muertos, because it is a beach that is bordered by a cemetery. And uh, we'll see, we'll see what's going on. Uh, it feels like there's enough trees here for some iguanas. Let's see, I'll let you guys know. All right, so here's looking back at the town of Saliolita. Looks like they're burning something, maybe yesterday where we were at by the turtle sanctuary. And here's all the blue-footed boobies. There's like hundreds on these rocks over here. So hold on. Right out there. There should be some blue-footed boobies in the mix. I see a pelican. I can't tell, honestly, if it's too bright. But we'll try to get a little closer because they're famous for their blue-footed boobies here. And here we go into the dead beach. Whee! Um, am I getting too wild for you? Up there? Nope. Okay. This is the cemetery, huh? Right. Oh yeah, right here. Yeah, sure enough. So here, I don't want to film it too much, but cemetery, we won't go in it or anything, but yeah. So then... You guys want to ride? <laughs> yeah, you want to ride? No, but like, no, but like no, looking. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> you have to pay to park, actually. You don't want to stay. It smells like sage. Does it smell better than just leaves? There's the beach, you can't take the car out. That's the beach there? Yeah. Okay. So you can actually rent. Look at these beautiful blue fish. Little resses or blennies, I don't know what they are, but they're so bright and colorful. I've never seen such bright blue in my life as these little guys. I have to ID them later. Also, we've got shrimp floating around in this pond. We've got little gobies. There's uh, some sheep's head minnow, it looks like. Just beautiful stuff in this pond, in this uh, tide pool. And I don't want to scare them, but look at this blue fish here. I'm going to try to get a still shot of it. I'll post that separate, guys. Well, I got in the water in these. Look at them all move. It's the skinniest pelican I've ever seen. This is the creek. This is the cleanest creek in town. And it's something lacking. That is for sure. Now there are some fish in it. I don't know how. A lot of these pipes are sewage from houses up and down the block. But some things just have a way of uh, surviving no matter what, I guess. This is where the iguanas come down and drink from every now and again. Alright, so here we are on the far side of the lagoon, as far away from the people as we can get. And there's actually um, uh, duckweed over here, which really makes me wonder if the water quality is improving. A uh, lot less cyanobacteria, more duckweed. Also a lot of tannins. A lot of 
uh, Indian almond, mango, guava, all sorts of different fruit trees. But there's styrofoam, and it drops off very quickly. I've been told to watch out for uh, the American crocodile here too. There's something moving underwater over there. It could be a turtle, but I, they they said to watch out for like a boat wake and then these look like vultures right here so they're not fishing birds some of the little guys are fishing birds but they eat all sorts of little bugs too so that's not really that indicative of if there could be <coughs> any brackish or freshwater fish here um, but the fact that so many plants are growing mangroves even they're growing here and they don't grow out on the coast. It does tell you a little bit, um, but this drops off very quickly, which is interesting to me. Uh, you can see the little insects are all over the top of the water too. So it could be that there is no, absolutely no animal in here that eats the insects, even under the mangroves where it's nice and covered when I stay back I haven't seen a single fish I've seen some lizards but no fish even for all those little bugs the rest of the river unfortunately is dried up and down here is where people kind of camp and there's a, uh, a slack line uh, camp of kind of hippies and also a lot of people that live here and work at the tourist trade type places they set up their tents back in these thick mangrove there's a tent back in there uh, places but I'm really bummed that all the rivers uh, it's the San Francisco River or Nyaret River sometimes it's called it's literally just called the lagoon on all the local maps uh, this time of year but it's enough water for birds and some beautiful bird habitat it's not enough water for any healthy fish apparently and that is the ninth tenth body of water that I've spent an hour or two around just trying to find any sign of fish and other than one creek and some mullet and some goldfish that were released very frustrating and in fact instead of actual fish you know we see harbingers of death <laughs> All right, so this explains why the lagoon has no fish. That's sewage running out of the town. Now, there's some sort of like little tagu or monitor. Can't tell. It's not an. It's not at all a uh, iguana. But man, this water is just nasty. I'm sure it's full of cyanobacteria, bacteria, eco. Uh, fecal coliform and food also there's little blue and gray herons all over in the trees now they go hunt out at the coast I'm kind of surprised that they're all hanging out back along this canal and this canal is what the actual river is in the off season and uh, turns into a narrow culvert back here and they've tried to kind of hide it from the tourists, I suppose. But, yeah, right here, it goes underground. But it just smells of human waste. And uh, there's a banana tree with bananas. Probably going to be sold somewhere at market. Uh, so it's kind of a weird mix, the world you see here of 
tourists their ideal paradise in a reality TV Kardashian way and then you've got what it takes to support that ow I just got nailed by that sprinkler head that's not plugged into anything but undoubtedly very beautiful in here just don't stray too far or it gets too real too fast let's take a look at the river here I can smell it it smells like bleach and human waste yeah and barely flowing because it's the dry season but sad to see all right so during the wet season this is the river and this is all parking right now which presents some uh, not so great aspects in that all the motor oil and garbage and even like burned out cars and stuff if you look up ahead there's a, a like a Vita bug burnt out on the road uh, and people also camp out here I gotta turn around because it gets way too sandy but this is the bank of where the river is and here you can see the root of the problems that the pipes just leak right into the river or not leak but they're designed to flow right into the river and people just burn their garbage here too it's unfortunate so yeah this being the riverbed you can see people are drawing there's lines from where people draw water out of it also to water their gardens and this is super super contaminated if we head up this way uh, you'll see not only but this is where the river ends and where the, there's kind of a lagoon and it's just extremely polluted there's like tadpoles and things there but that's about it um, so you wonder how the fish go extinct here well this is how is just people don't even get treated right or exist very well for the most part and uh, let alone the government treating the animals right or anything like that so it's an uphill battle for sure and even with all this tourist money and stuff coming here uh, it basically just makes the consumerism more intense uh, you'd think that it, perhaps it would uh, provide more funding for making things nice but it's it's not it's just putting uh, lipstick on a pig as they say unfortunately all right so this is the Amica or Ameca River <clears throat> where the Ameca Splendens and uh, so many of the Goodyads are further upstream up in the hills uh, in the mountains and this is going to the airport you cross over the river and the mouth of the river and this is the gal driving us down to the airport <clears throat> this is some sort of golf course or reservoir they're building um, that looks like they ran out of money for and it's a reservoir of the river water that's just really stagnant there's some birds and alligators and that's my wife uh, just you could tell we were all a little bit bummed. That's about as good as the river looks right there anywhere, and it's full of cyanobacteria. And this trip, as beautiful as some things were, and as nice as the people were and everything, <clears throat> it left me with uh, a lot of things to think about. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. This is Alexander Williamson, and uh, I am 
so happy to be in central Mexico bringing you guys these stories, these videos. It's not possible without you. So thank you so very much. And I will see you guys next time on The Secret History, Living in Your Aquarium.